Hey there, everybody. Adam from X Laser here. Welcome to another Fundamentals Friday. Today's topic, Liquid Skies 101. So Liquid Skies are one of the most commonly used laser effects, and for good reason. They look really cool. You can do really frantic Liquid Skies. You can do cool, smooth Liquid Skies. It's just one of those go-to tools that you're going to find yourself using all the time. One important thing to note is lots of different packages out there help you create liquid skies because it is one of the most basic effects of laser. In today's video, we're going to be using a X-Laser Skywriter HPX M5 with Mercury Control and the Avalite's Titan software for control. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and locate the fixture. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose a gobo that is going to be a bit more well suited to a liquid sky effect. So there are a couple different things that we can do here. Um, you'll see that we have a flat line. Um, it is actually a flat line. There's a little bit of a disruption in there because the scrim that I'm using isn't completely stretched tight. Uh, that allows you to see both the beam and the image projected. Um, but it is actually a flat line coming out of the laser. It's pretty cool, but it's not nearly as cool as if we add some texture to it. There are a couple different ways we can go about adding texture. The most common is to go ahead and add a basic wave modulator to it. So in this case, I'm going to put a linear sine wave on there with a fairly short wavelength, or I guess long wavelength, and then a fairly shallow amplitude. So you can see when I come in here into the wavelength, I can change how much texture we've got in the beam. And then using the amplitude, I can change how deep each of those waves is. So I'll go ahead and go with something fairly shallow here. Okay. Now this is pretty cool. This is a lot more visually interesting than what we had before, but it's still not really getting us where we want to be. So I'm also going to give it a traverse speed for the wave. This way we've got a little bit of movement to it, a little bit more texture, and it's a bit more visually interesting. The other thing that we're looking to do is add just a little bit of additional movement to this. Um, ideally, what I think I would want out of this particular pattern is to have it moving from top to bottom and vice versa, just ping-ponging between that. So there are two different ways we can go about that. One is, if I come to the built-in effects engine of the laser, I can go ahead and apply a linear ping-pong effect. I'll give it a 90-degree angle so that we're coming straight up and down. Then I'll give it some scale, and then I have to apply a speed to it in order to get that movement. There we go. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And a little bit slower. So now we've got this really interesting moving liquid sky kind of effect. Um, and I can, of course, apply colors to this to make it even more interesting. I can change my gobo. to something that already has a little bit of additional texture in it, like this right here. And then I can run that through a prism effect. Now we've got this really dynamic liquid sky effect using the built-in wave effects. Let me go back to that original gobo we were using. So another way of doing that effect is to not do it inside of the laser's effect engine, but actually use the effect engine built into the console. So I'm going to go ahead and select my fixtures, go to Shapes and Effects, go to Shape Generator. Now I'm going to create a tilt saw. I'm going to run it on the sub fixtures because that runs it on GeoPost. And now, using the encoders, I can change things like the size of my tilt saw, the speed, and the phase. One of the nice things about using the effects generator that's built into the console is that if I've got a setup of, you know, 4, 8, 12, however many lasers, I can then adjust the phase and the offset and the spread between them. So it allows me to get really dynamic effects where we've got these, you know, 
interlinking waves or cross waves or something like that where all of the projectors are working together but slightly offset so it's more visually interesting. The main reason to use the one that's built into the console or that's built into the laser is if I wanted to use color effects where the wave moves in and out of the color effect. I'll show you that in our bonus tip video. Thanks for joining us for another Fundamentals Friday. I look forward to seeing you soon.